A round of applause for Dr. Bob. We invite all who are physically able to now stand for the line of march. Ladies and gentlemen, the eighth president of Tuskegee University, Dr. Lily D. McNair and Platform Party. A round of applause, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the Council of Deans from Tuskegee University. A round of applause, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the President's Cabinet and Administrative Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, the esteemed faculty of Tuskegee University.
Ladies and gentlemen, candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and Master of Science. Ladies and gentlemen, candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Architecture, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Science. Ladies and gentlemen, before you take your seats, before you take your seats, once again, a round of applause for the eighth president of Tuskegee University and the first permanent female president of the university. Good morning. 
Good morning. What a wonderful opportunity we have at historic Tuskegee University to welcome you, our parents, our relatives and friends, community constituents and students to this 2018 Summer Commencement Convocation. We are pleased to have all of you here and we appreciate very much you're entrusting your daughters and sons to us for their educational experiences over these past four more years. We are confident that they're going out into the world well prepared to represent themselves, you, and Tuskegee University with the highest level of knowledge and skills to function in this global society. I am very pleased to serve Tuskegee University as its eighth president. I've been on campus for almost a month now, and the Tuskegee experience that I have heard so much about has been growing on me very quickly. I look forward to the opportunities ahead to support you, our new graduates, the faculty and the staff, and our alums as we create an even stronger Tuskegee University. Our program this morning will proceed as printed, with one exception. Trustee Peblin Warren will give the greetings on behalf of the chairman of our board of trustees, John Page. Dr. Gray will now come and give the convocation, followed by the greetings. Let's take a moment and invite uh, six members of our faculty who may be a bit crowded there to take these vacant pews available on the other side. Come right on, please. As assertively as you wish for your students to take on your disciplines. While they're coming, I would like to remind you that there is an overflow location, ushers and audience, there is an overflow location in the engineering building, that is the Luther Hilton Foster Engineering Building. The auditorium has been established as an overflow location. Are there any other members of the faculty now who might join us here for your comfort? So be it. A word of prayer. O thou who knowest our origins and our destiny, and whose truth endureth to all generations, grant, O Lord, thy blessing upon those who gathered in this hallowed place, young and old, male and female, black and white, from near and far away places, to share in the summer commencement exercises of historic Tuskegee University. May thy holy presence impress upon us the sacredness of this occasion. May it inspire us to new heights of achievement. May it imbue us with new possibilities of accomplishment. May it remind us of all that this ceremony represents in the life and work of this institution. May those to whom degrees are awarded this day ever seek after that which enriches life and ensures the dignity and integrity of humankind. May those who graduate this day know that to whom much is given, from them much is required. They have an accountability to past generations. They have a responsibility for future generations. They have a mandate to contribute something of enduring value, not only to society, but to the world. They may not be able to change the entire world, but they can make a world of difference by being people who know the value of hard work and sacrifice, by being people who have a sense of direction and purpose, by being people with the courage to do what they believe is right. May this university ever remain faithful in its quest for excellence in higher education. 
This we pray for the sake of all that we hold sacred among us. Let the people of God say amen. amen. You may be seated. Shall I leave this? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. As always, I have to acknowledge that this is truly a day that the Lord has made. And we have so much to rejoice about today with our 2018 summer graduates. On behalf of our chairman, attorney John Page, and the Tuskegee University Board of Trustees, we have with us today one of our trustee members, Mr. Henry Davis. Will you please stand and recognize Mr. Davis? We also have with us a former trustee with Dr. Alexander Robbins. Would you please stand and be acknowledged? Thank you. And to our graduates, we want to just say congratulations for a job well done. Now, you've had some good times. You've met some lifelong friends. Now, you will walk into the real world. And let me tell you, there will be challenges as you walk into this real world. But I encourage you to hold your heads high, look to the hills from which cometh your strength, and I promise you, you can be the best at whatever you want to be. As you know, our HBCUs are facing serious challenges our funding challenges. There are even states now that they're saying that it's not a need to have an HBCU. But as long as Tuskegee stands, there will always be a need to educate our young African-American and anybody else that wants to come to Tuskegee University. As I said, hold your heads high. I've had to experience a lot. I've been in the seat where you are now. I remember the day that I graduated from Tuskegee. I wasn't there to tell you how many years ago. But once I got out there in that real world and I saw the challenges and people start asking me, well, where did you go and get your BS degree from? Alabama or Auburn? I said, Tuskegee. Where did you get your master's from? Alabama, Auburn. I said, Tuskegee? And the response was, oh, Tuskegee is different. They have quality students. I said, oh, you don't know anything about it. We have plenty, plenty great alumnus that we've graduated from our Tuskegee University. But I just want to leave this with you so you can have some bragging facts, so you can stand tall wherever you go in these United States or even out of the country, because I'm assured that many of you will be traveling out of the country in your professions. When they ask you about Tuskegee, where did you go? Hold your heads high and say, do you know that Tuskegee is the number one producer of African-American aerospace science engineers in the nation? Did you know that Tuskegee University is a leading producer in the country of African-American engineer graduates in chemical, electrical, and mechanical engineering? Do you know that Tuskegee is the top producer of African-American PhD holders 
in material science and engineering in the United States? Do you know that Tuskegee produced more African-American general officers in the military than any other institution, including the service academies? Did you know that Tuskegee is the largest producer of African-Americans with baccalaureate degrees in math, science, and engineering in Alabama? Tuskegee University is the only historically black college and university with a fully accredited college of veterinary medicine that offers the doctorate degree and produces over 75% of the African-American veterinarians in the world. Tuskegee University is the only historical black college and university in the nation designated as the location for the National Center of Bioethics in Research and Healthcare. Do you know that the first nursing baccalaureate program in Alabama and one of the oldest in the United States, originator and producer of the famous Tuskegee Airmen, in partnership with the U.S. Army Corps, the only college of university campus in the nation to be designated a national historic site by the U.S. Congress. And just to add a little bit on being in Alabama, you know how Alabama and Auburn football is, but tell them, do you know that Tuskegee University has the most football wins than any school in the state of Alabama? So as you leave today, just remember Mother Tuskegee, we always need your resources no resources are too small. Just remember your start and where you started here at Tuskegee University. And when you hear T-U, you know. you know what to tell them. Thank you. Good morning. To President McNair, Mayor Haygood, members of the board, Dr. Troy, faculty, staff, students, family, and friends, it is my pleasure to bring you greetings from the 2018-2019 Student Government Association, the Rebirth Administration, and to the class of 2018, congratulations and good luck on your future endeavors. Thank you. We are always very happy to have members of the Tuskegee University Board of Trustees present to support us in our work. In addition to Trustee Warren, I'd also like to acknowledge again Trustee Henry Davis as well as former Trustee Rollins. Will you please stand for another round of supportive applause? Thank you again for your presence. We know that we have Mayor Haygood on the platform. Do we have any other local or state officials present? If so, would you please stand? Thank you very much for coming. Mr. Bernard Houston and city council members, if you are in the audience, would you also please stand? <laughs> Thank you very much. All parents and relatives of the 2018 class, please stand. Thank you so much for your support of all of our students. the family love. Will the family members of our speaker please stand? Okay. I'd also like to ask all alums who are in the audience and on stage to please stand so that we can acknowledge your support.
We are also especially proud of welcoming back our alumni who are also relatives of our current candidates for graduation. We welcome all of you at this very special celebration. We will now hear a solo from Deborah Ellington and then I will introduce our speaker. When the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours. One day, when the war is won, we will be sure, we will be sure, oh, one day. When the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours, oh, one day. When the war is won, we will be sure, we will be sure, oh, glory. Oh, glory, oh, glory, oh, glory, we'll cry glory, oh, glory, oh, glory, oh, glory, now the war isn't over. The victory isn't won, but we'll fight on to the finish. And when it's all done, we'll cry glory, we'll cry glory. Oh. Thank you very much, Ms. Ellington. Let's give her another round of applause. I'd like to make a point of personal privilege and ask that we recognize the first gentleman of Tuskegee University, Dr. George Roberts, the very first gentleman of the university. It is now an honor to introduce you to the Honorable Mayor of the City of Tuskegee, a man who is a true selfless citizen and a loyal public officer of this town. His sense of humor and integrity are qualities which we all embrace and admire. His full biographical information is in your program booklet on page seven, so I will only mention a few key points. Mayor Lawrence Haygood, whom we all call T 
Tony was elected mayor in August of 2016. For the past nine years, he has also served as an economic business development specialist with the Tuskegee-Macon County Community Development Corporation, where he promotes, among other things, business and industrial development. Mr. Haygood is a graduate of Rhodes College in Tennessee and received the MBA from Auburn University. He has also completed additional graduate work at the Cranert School of Management at Purdue University and at Georgia Institute of Technology. He is a member and past president of Alpha Nu Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. His accomplishments as a grant writer on behalf of the Community Development Corporation landed him the vice chairmanship for the HBCU Community Development Action Coalition National Board, among other leadership roles. He has accepted the challenge and we are delighted that he could join us today for this occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in applause as we welcome our own mayor, Tony Haygood, Jr., as the 2018 Summer Commencement Speaker. Thank you very much. To President McNair, Members of the Board of Trustees, Class of 2018, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. good morning. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to address you this morning at the Tuskegee University Summer Commencement Exercises. And while we're here for awarding degrees and a big celebration with family and friends, I'd like for you to allow me to share a few thoughts with you before the full celebration begins. First, I'd like to say congratulations to Dr. Lily D. McNair on her selection as the eighth president of Tuskegee University and the first permanent non-interim female president selected. <laughs> I also say welcome again to the Tuskegee, Alabama and Macon County and the entire Tuskegee family and community. In addition, I'd like to say thank you for accepting this challenge to lead this great HBCU into our efforts to make new history and achieve great accomplishments as has been done so many times in the past. Secondly, I'd like to ask you to join me in thanking Dr. Charlotte Morris, our past interim president. Chairman Page. <laughs> Chairman Page and the entire Board of Trustees for guiding Tuskegee University through turbulent waters of financial accreditation and challenges to a point of stability and solid accreditation while directing us toward a bright future that we know Tuskegee University has ahead as they have passed the torch to Dr. McNair for the next leg of the journey. Yes, a lot remains to be done, but we've got a great start in the right direction and we're on the right course with good leadership. A few years ago, as you may remember, a famous recruit slogan for the U.S. Marines was, we're looking for a few good men. But as in the past in our community, we've always known for our causes, we're looking for a few good men and a few good women. And so we'll name a few like Rosa Parks, Amelia Boynton Robinson, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Mary McLeod Bethune, Madam C.J. Walker, a little six-year-old black girl named Ruby Bridges who integrated the schools with federal marshals, and now Dr. Charlotte Morris and Dr. Lily D. McNair. Yes, we need a few good men, but we need a lot more good women, and we've come to recognize that. <laughs> Graduation is similar to a funeral homegoing service. It's sad on the one hand, but a celebration on the other, especially for the graduates, that is. I lost a close friend that I grew up with just a little over a week ago. 
He was a member of our Babe Ruth League championship baseball team. We brought the championship back to our community, Green Fork, which is a lot of pride for us in this community. We grew up together as classmates. We were pitchers on the same team. We grew up together as classmates. He was a former member of the Macon County Board of Education. He was a former member of the Tuskegee University IT staff here for a number of years, Aaron Robinson. It was a sad occasion, occasion on the one hand because we knew we wouldn't see him anymore. He wouldn't be there as a classmate to organize our class reunions. And yet, because we knew he had no more health challenges, he was now at peace and at rest. And yet, because we knew all of his, the memories we had together and his family came and high school classmates and childhood classmates, it truly became a celebration of his life. So we celebrated and we enjoyed the moments and the memories. In the same manage, manner, graduation can be said for the graduates because you're leaving everyday friends that you've come to know, fraternity brothers and sorority sisters. Your favorite campus tree shade spot will no longer be there for you on a daily basis. Your general TU comfort zone, you'll be leaving that setting. The golden voices of the choir, the excitement of the Tuskegee University marching Crimson Pipers, and of course, the ball and parlay, the Tuskegee way. <laughs> and you're going to places unknown that you don't know exactly what to expect. But now, on the other hand, you can get ready to celebrate because there's no more late night cramming for exams. No more nervousness about test results that you're waiting for. No more stressing over tuition deadlines. <laughs> and there's great expectation that you have more freedom, independence, and opportunity for positive things coming your way. So to the graduates, congratulations on another major positive milestone in your life, and hopefully one of many more to come in your future. I'll speak to a few things today that I want to share with you, a few particular points, and then try to bring us to a point of challenge so we understand what the expectations are of you as a Tuskegee grad. Graduates, you are in a very good position at this time. I serve on the State of Alabama Workforce Development Board, and in our most recent meeting, the governor spoke to us and highlighted the fact that in Alabama, we are having great success recruiting industries, corporations, and businesses. Lately, just recently in Huntsville, they opened another Toyota Mazda plant that's being built. Facebook is coming to Huntsville in a big way. In the Birmingham Bessemer area, it's a major multi-million dollar project coming with Amazon. And yes, soon, hopefully, Leonardo T100 right here at Historic Moton Field in Tuskegee, Alabama. <laughs> but the concern is that statewide, as well as nationwide, there is great concern about identifying the trained and qualified workforce needed to fill the skilled jobs and assignments. With your degrees and your knowledge and your willingness to adapt to the demands of the workforce arena, you're in, there are tremendous opportunities awaiting you and your career plans. I attended our annual Electric Cities Utilities Board conference a few weeks ago where the presenter offered some very eye-opening information. You millennials are now the, now the largest group of the workforce surpassing baby boomers. When the presenter asked how many in the room were millennials, only two out of 200 attendees raised their hands. What was even more surprising and perhaps caused shock and the silence that came in the room was when she announced to the audience of people, mostly board members, supervisors, managers, between the ages of 50 and 70, that almost half of the current workforce, 47% nationwide, is 33 years old and younger. That means you have tremendous opportunity ahead of you. Her major point, though, was that we will have a workforce that crosses generational lines, and learning to communicate and understand each other 
is critical to the success of businesses, institutions, governments, and corporations. One of the major differences that was noted was that with traditional workers and baby boomers, we'll often reach for the cell phone to call someone or go by and have a face-to-face -face meeting with them to get an understanding. Generation X, on, Generation X and millennials, on the other hand, will text and email, very rarely reaching for the phone or seeking a face-to-face -face meeting. The generational difference, differences will challenge you to recognize that while Google provides a world of valuable information, we cannot minimize the importance of knowledge gain, experience, and most of all, wisdom. Therefore, it is important that we learn how to merge the technology of youthful generations with experience, wisdom of the senior generations to maximize our efficiency and effectiveness in our combined efforts. Now, as most speakers usually like to say, and you hear this many, many times, these are challenging times. Seems like all times are challenging times, but you will hear this continuously, these are challenging times, and that is true at this time. You may call, want to call this the Trump era, and many well people very concerned about what we face in a high degree of uncertainty as we look to 2018 and beyond. President Trump's irregular daily briefings shoot from the hip responses to serious questions from reporters, high degree of unpredictability on Twitter, his praise of Russia, and particularly Vladimir Putin, have all caused a great deal of concern and a climate of uncertainty throughout America. And we as Americans wonder where are we going from here. You don't know what to expect in a tweet or an attack from the leader of our nation. We could easily be at war at any time. If you are chosen, selected, or promoted to leadership in your business, company, or organization, please carefully think about what you say and what impact it will have. Dr. King reminded us, quote, nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. I want to share with you the words given several years ago from someone who was facing uncertainty as they moved ahead. Quote, I'm still determined to be cheerful and happy in whatever situation I may be. For I've also learned from experience that the greater part of our happiness or misery depends upon our dispositions, not upon our circumstances. The words of Margaret, Martha Washington, First Lady of George Washington, first U.S. President. In April, April of this year, we realized the 50 years anniversary since the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Dr. King represented truth, justice, responsibility, nonviolence, peace, and love. You can kill the dreamer, but you can't kill the dream. While the crazy events of 2017 and 2018 give us some reason to shake our heads and have doubt, I'll go back to the words validated by President Obama. Yes, we can. In 2018, as African Americans and people of color, we have to stay fully engaged in the political and economic processes and operations of this country. Further, we have to accept and fully realize and let other Americans know that this is our country as much as anyone else's. And anyone that doesn't recognize that and is not inclusive of all Americans is a mistake and will lead to significant division and chaos. As Dr. King so eloquently stated and reminded all in this country, we too are Americans who built this country are entitled to the guarantees of the U.S. Constitution and the Declaration of Independence in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for our families. I encourage you to stop waiting on someone else to free you, free yourself. Have the courage to speak up and speak out when necessary. Following our own values, long established in our communities, we have to decide what success is and what it looks like in our community. Define the successes 
we seek that are rooted in values that are intangible. Values such as honesty, truthfulness, integrity, credibility, confidentiality, service, and gratitude. We need to consider and celebrate President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, Sasha and Malia, and yes, the mother-in-law. Were they perfect? No. But they were darn good example for us to learn from. If you look at the situation today, think back a few years ago. We didn't have shuffling people in and out of office every other week. There was a sense of stability. There were no scandals. The first lady was leading major projects for health, gardening, things for young people, people for our military. And things were said and done to that family that never would have been tolerated for any other family in the White House. But yet, with class and dignity, they represented us and represented us well. So we don't have to wait on anyone else's approval. Others may not lift them up, but we certainly should. Where do we go from here? We go wherever is necessary to tear down the artificial walls and barriers that divide us in this community, in this state, and throughout America as well. We go tell the good, silent people that witness wrong and injustice that they must have courage and practice faith and speak out. Dr. King stated, quote, history will record that the greatest tragedy of this period of social transition was not the strident clamor of bad people but the appalling silence of the good people. In the end, we, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. When we do our part, then let go and let God, things will happen. Just like Rosa Parks and Dr. King and so many that worked with her years ago, changes that needed to occur, occurred. We have to do the same in 2018 as we move forward, and you as graduates have to look for your part to do the same thing as you move ahead. Make sure you do your part, step aside, let go, and let God do the rest. I want to encourage you to focus on execution. Execution is extremely important today where planning is strongly emphasized. I don't want to minimize the importance of planning because I'm a strong believer in developing good plans. While in the past, many concentrated on the conceptual framework, today the key word is strategic plan. However, we have to be careful not to get caught up in what my good friend, former Mayor Omar Neal used to call paralysis of analysis. Simply meaning that when you get to the point where we talk and talk and discuss and talk and plan, and nothing gets done. See, when I came into office as a councilman, we had all these plans on the shelf. Ten-year plans, five-year plans, 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 plans. Well, I say to you, we have to get those plans off the shelf. Understand and extract what we need from those plans and get to work. Take action, execute wherever you are. Oftentimes, the strategic plan shows you need to do something differently from what's already been done. Then that requires changes, which is difficult, and it also necessitates that you get out of your comfort zone. You are more likely to be judged by what you did and what you accomplished rather than any plan on a shelf. So be sure to go beyond the good plans and execute what is needed to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that we're going backwards in this community. And this time it's a good thing. So we're going backwards to what originally started at Tuskegee University when Booker T. Washington started and went out into the community. When George Washington Carver went out into the community with the farmers. When Thomas Monroe Camel took the extension program out into the community. We have now bridged the gap between the community and the university that somehow got away from us. And that's extremely important. During the last several years, the thing that I have noticed in the change in Tuskegee is how many students got involved in this community helping us out. Because when I first went into office and we started meeting with the students, what we heard was the locals. And the locals was like, not too pleasant a word for us. 
because it was a separate group that somehow they were given the idea you shouldn't associate with. But gradually we saw students come out into the community and get very active with our citizens, interacting with our citizens, having concern about the community because they went back and understood what was started here at Tuskegee, was town and gown together, and we're trying to improve the conditions of our people and the entire state. I can say to you that I'm very thankful for what the students have done. They've been an inspiration to others in the community, not only the students. We have some graduates here today. I think Fanta Yaro's in this class, and she worked with a number of our people in taxes and planning and eradicating um, some of the abandoned houses we have and developing those plans. We have Mr. Carl Morgan, who's been working with us in a capacity to establish how to solve our landfill issues, how to talk about recycling, and the ideas that he learned in the classroom as an engineer. We've had students who recently graduate, graduated, like Philip Stringer and Elisa Sanders, who bought properties in this community, renovated them, and invited other investments. We have Board of Trustees members who've now invested back in Tuskegee. So we're building the bridge back between the university and the community. This makes us all stronger. Makes the community stronger, makes the university stronger. And I'm thankful to report that recently, in our most recent city council meeting, we approved three MOUs to begin to define a working relationship with Tuskegee University and the city of Tuskegee as we move forward. A common theme we have often had among most African-American organizations, Masonic, fraternal, sororities, and churches, is promoting faith, trust, and accountability. While we pledge to uphold these values in our organizations, we don't consistently practice those values in our families, in our businesses, in our partnerships. Faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith allows us not to worry, but to focus on performing what our measure of responsibility and commitments are. Trust. Trust, when established, allows us to work together because I know that you will do your best for me, and regardless, I will do my best for you. Accountability. Accountability means keeping each other on track by clearly communicating our expectations and demanding performance based on what we agreed upon. And when you can get accountability, you can begin to work toward trust, which oftentimes is missing in our community. We must learn to communicate and understand the importance of networking. Graduates, I'll say it again, you cannot minimize the importance of networking, because I've seen it time and time again where someone who is as much qualified here as the next person is and someone more qualified doesn't get to the position they need to because of a failure of ability to network. Networking plays a major part in your life, in your career, in your development, whether individual or institution or communities, networking is particularly important. So I encourage you to get involved in networking, find support groups, and connect with people of like minds and like spirits. Then we can build the relationships we need to succeed with trust, accountability, good communication, and most of all, understanding. We can build stronger families, stronger churches, stronger organizations, stronger business partnerships, and stronger institutions such as Tuskegee University. Maya Angelou stressed that point when she said, quote, I've learned that people will forget what you said, they will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. People may not remember your name, but they will certainly remember how you made them feel. And that's what determines who you are in their world, friend or foe, and how will they work with you or against you. Many of you know the story of the Tuskegee Airmen and General Benjamin O. Davis and the silent treatment he endured in the four years while he was West, at West Point Academy. No one spoke to him outside of the class. He had no roommate. He had the room by himself. And on top of that, think about it. There was no cell phone back there, no texting, no TV. Still, he graduated in the upper portion of his class. 
And having endured that experience, it only prepared him so he could train and prepare the Tuskegee Airmen for what they would encounter. At the 75th anniversary celebration of the Tuskegee Airmen, a reporter asked what they thought about being famous in their notoriety. Each airman in their response stated that they weren't thinking about notoriety. They were just doing what General Davis taught and required of them, which was discipline, focus, and commitment. The airmen, many of whom are 90 years old and older, had all had fairly successful lives beyond the military experience. And in their response, they all recall the key values that they had learned some 70 years earlier. No shortcuts for getting over. Be careful of the hookup, because it's like entitlement. It may not always be available. Second example I'd like to use to speak of the importance of truth is Nelson Mandela. Always communicate the truth, however challenging that may be. Because tr the truth is always politically correct. You don't want to run from the truth because the truth will be revealed sooner or later. Remember Dr. King in quoting William Cullen Bryant, truth crushed to the earth will rise again. Nelson Mandela spoke truth against apartheid in South Africa and was imprisoned for almost 30 years in the prime of his life. Think about it, as you're graduating a few years from now, if you were imprisoned for your beliefs, for standing up for what you believed in, 30 years of his life, they thought imprisoning him would crush the truth about the injustice of apartheid and cause others to fear imprisonment and not speak out. Although he spent 28 years in prison, Mandela was freed along with his prison mates. Apartheid was abolished, and he rose to be president of his country, the country that imprisoned him. Not only did he rise there, but because he refused to let the bitterness against him cause retaliation in his country, he rose again and was selected to one of the highest awards in the world, the Nobel Peace Prize. The truth that they thought was crushed to the earth rose from the prison to freedom for his people, to the abolishment of apartheid in the country, to the presidency, and eventually to the Nobel Peace Prize. Raise up the truth, drown out fake news and all the lies. We have the same basic message today as we look back over the values throughout the years of challenges, starting with our own individual commitment to do whatever is necessary to move ahead and succeed. Continue to focus on preparation because you never know when you'll be called upon to step up and lead or to execute. As a TU graduate, there are expectations of you. What is your commitment given the opportunity you now have? What is your competitive advantage? Most important this time, what type of person will you be? Tuskegee Airmen could have been some of the most highly recognized what we call ace pilots in the military. Ace pilots shoot down planes and are awarded and, and recognized throughout the world. But their mission was protection of the bombers. <clears throat> and thanks to their discipline, they focused on the mission <clears throat> and destroyed the myths that African Americans couldn't fly, couldn't execute the mission, and didn't have courage. They succeeded far beyond anyone's expectations. So now you have expectations as Tuskegee graduates. As I begin to conclude, I'd like to reference James Weldon Johnson, who so beautifully put it, we go forward in 2018 with courage based on the faith that the dark past has taught us. We go forward together in unity as, as Americans, blacks, whites, and others, and all people of color, with the hope that the new day has brought us. Because we know who holds the future, and we know who holds the days of the rising sun of the new day begun. Knowing that a brighter future is ahead because we will do all we need to do to secure a positive future. Many are called, few are chosen, just like Dr. Morris was called to step up and guide us through challenges, and Dr. McNair was called to pick up the baton and keep the pace moving for the university, now you as Tuskegee University graduates will be called in 2018 with high expectations to establish who you will be, 
to begin to make your contributions in the workforce, to make your contributions on behalf of people in our greater society, to make your contributions to your community, to your church, and to your family. Now, 50 years after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, yes, you're being called to keep the dream alive. Don't just go along to get along. Stand up for what is right. Show up and show out. And we shall overcome to make the dream a reality for all people in generations to come. T, you? You know because you know the knowledge you have been given and that you are prepared for the task and opportunities ahead. T, you? You know because you know that the university that you're graduating from, is, although a smaller private HBCU, has had at least eight U.S. presidents and two first ladies on this campus, is respected worldwide and world known. T, you? You know because you have the spirit of Tuskegee inside you, like Dr. Booker T. Washington, Dr. George Washington Carver, William Dawson, the Tuskegee Airmen, Richard Wright, Lionel Richie, Lonnie Johnson, and Tom Joyner. If you need any extra inspiration or a recharge of your Tuskegee spirit, go stand under the Booker T. Washington Monument or walk in the agriculture demonstration fields of George Washington Carver or go to the George Washington Carver Museum walk through the valley between Tantum Hall and White Hall, walk around the monument at Tompkins Hall and look in awe at the miracle of how Tompkins Hall was built years ago. Most recently when they put the crane at the bottom of Tompkins Hall and that crane went up higher and higher and higher, I can only imagine how the students and the professors and people built that building back in the day when we didn't have cranes. So that's what you know. Walk across the street and view the trophies of the winningest HBCU football program in the nation at Logan Hall. Standing under the four-star General Daniel Chappie James fighter jet on campus. Or visit the Tuskegee, Tuskegee Airmen Museum at Historic Moton Field. And you should get all the Tuskegee spirit you need to challenge anything and conquer any obstacles that you may encounter. T.U. one more time. You know because you know how you feel right now. <laughs> like Lionel Richie said, walking this campus in these same grounds so many times, it's easy like Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, for Tuskegeeans, at this point that you are, it doesn't get any better than this. And I'd like you to ask you to thank any and everybody who helped you along the way. Your parents, your family, your friends, your instructors, your mentors, your classmates. We generally never make it by ourselves. Always take time to thank those who helped you to get here and beyond. <clears throat> What's next? Graduates, it's up to you. You're now a Tuskegee graduate. And if you understand, enough said. Congratulations, and God bless you in all your future endeavors.
cannot express my gratitude. All I am and ever hope for, I owe it all to you. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has done with his blood. He has saved me with his power. He has raised me to God be all the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live my life. And let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary with his blood. He has saved me with his power. Okay, now's the time. We are going to celebrate with class and dignity. <laughs> Madam President, I have the honor to present Dr. Sheikh Jelani, Vice President for Research and Dean of the Graduate School, who will present the Dean for the candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy in the respective unit. Madam President. Madam President, I have the honor to present Dr. Hashmat Aglan, Dean College of Engineering, who will present candidate for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in his unit. The mic is not working. Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree Doctor of Philosophy, Materials, Science and Engineering. Shatori 
Sanova Sharie Meadows. Congratulations. Yeah. Madam President, I have the honor to present Dr. Sheikh Jelani, Vice President for Research and Dean of the Graduate School, who will present the Dean for the candidate for the Master of Science in their respective units. Madam President, I have the honor to present Dr. Walter Hill, Dean College of Agriculture, Environment, and Nutrition Sciences, Dr. Hashmat Aglan, Dean College of Engineering, Dr. Chenna Prakash, Dean College of Arts and Sciences, and Dr. Kai Kuhn, Dean College of Business and Information Science, who will present candidates for the degree Master of Science in their respective units. Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for degree Master of Science in Animal Science, Environmental Management, Environmental Sciences, Food and Nutritional Sciences, Plant and Soil Sciences. Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Master of Science, Biology. Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree Master of Science, Information Systems Management. Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree Master of Science, Electrical Engineering, Materials, Science and Engineering, Mechanical Engineering. Brianna Brooks. Amani Luton. Janice Watts. Frank Abrahamson. Abraham Al Gahir. Congratulations. Haley Beeman. <laughs> Kiona Hall. Sanjok Podil. <laughs> Kalona Carter, the first online degree student in the history of Tuskegee University. Nia Hicks. <laughs> Carl Morgan, the first online degree candidate in the history of Tuskegee University. Congrats. I'm a you, Izel. Congratulations. Amina Nalika. Donovan Stone. <laughs> Nuf Albegina. Congratulations. 
Kentua Henley. Congratulations. Laura Mina Martinez. Congratulations. Kathia Miranda Similton Trimino. Congratulations. Asha Stigo. Congratulations. Asamuyu Abalo Banoni. <laughs> Tobias Donnell. Vincent Hembrick Holman. <laughs> Mohanad Idris. Congratulations. Zahirdin Mohammed. <laughs> Mohammed Yudin. Congratulations. Hamed Alahalan. Congratulations. Kimaro Muir. Isra El Hussein. Jasmine Payton. Asad Imetis. Abdul Rafil Mohammed. Shadab Mohammed. <laughs> Mohammed Mubin Sheikh. Fanta Yaro. Congratulations. Is that it? That was it, right? Okay. Okay. What's that? Bachelors. We already did those. Yeah, we've already done this. We're on the bachelors. Okay. Madam President, I have the honor to present. Dr. Carlo Jackson Bell, Dean, the Robert R. Taylor School of Architecture and Construction Science. Dr. Walter A. Hill, Dean, College of Agriculture, Environment, and Nutrition Sciences. Dr. Shana Prakash, Dean, College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Kia Kuhn, Dean, College of Business and Information Science. Dr. Heshmet Aglin, Dean, College of Engineering. Dr. Constance Hendricks, Dean, School of Nursing and Allied Health. They will present the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in their respective units. Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Construction Science and Management.
Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for degree, Bachelor of Science in Animal and Veterinary Sciences, Agribusiness, Food and Nutritional Sciences. Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts and Science, Biology, English, History, Psychology, Sociology. Madam President, I have the pleasure to present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Computer Science Information Systems, Finance, Hospitality Management, Sales and Marketing. Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science, Aerospace Science Engineering, Chemical Engineering, Mechanical Engineering. Madam President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Health Science Nursing. Alex Brandon Menser. Nicholas Sullivan. Tawanda Collins. Taylor Franklin Cumlade, Walnika Jones, Paris Malone, Jamel Miller. And Therese Stinson. <laughs> Zenzele Ubaka Coulter. <laughs> Morgan, Morgan Bernadette Verrett. <laughs> Taylor. Taylor Bernice Wilson. Deja Jackson. Alexis Long. Kenuthia Kabuji. Armani Gordon. Jared Jones. Gabrielle Hollifield. Kristen Jones. Gabrielle Lee, double major psychology and sociology.
Osborne Jose Jabari Thompson Jr. Kelvin Shelton. Tarian Stewart. Rihanna Jordan Neely. Desmond Reese. Kaya Brown. Darius Stark. Brittany Evans. Daniel Kuhn. Jordan Thomas. Thank you. Rodney Hill. Benjamin Gardner. Terence Lee the second. Daylin Martin. Brittany Carmichael. Mavis Aduade. Karina Keynes. Takira Shivers. Michaela Coleman. Gina Crawford. Alexis Davis. Sandy Decembre, Isha Hall Andrews, Merlin Jones, Jasmine Kearney. Mylicio McNeely. Brigine Prescott. Ashley Simpson. Roslyn Thompson. Thomas. Jessica Washington.
the authority vested in me. By the authority vested in me. By the Tuskegee University Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculty that you have completed all of the degree requirements, I am pleased to confer upon you the Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Science, Bachelor of Architecture, Bachelor of Arts, or Bachelor of Science appropriate for your preparation. And in token thereof, I have awarded you these degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations to each of you. You may now turn your tassels. Congratulations, and you may now be seated. I now call upon Mr. Burt Rowe, President of the Tuskegee National Alumni Association, who will administer the alumni oath. Dr. McNair, Mayor Haggard, thank you for those great and kind words. You are a true uh, uh, mayor that we are proud of, and we're looking forward to supporting you with all the things you're doing in Tuskegee, Alabama. Uh, Trustee uh, Martin and Trustee um, uh, <laughs> Warren, <laughs> uh, and, and platform guests. On behalf of the Tuskegee National Alumni Association, I want to be the first to extend my hearty congratulations to the graduates in the summer commencement 2018 at Tuskegee University. Congratulations to all of you. Job well done. And I also want to congratulate your extended family members who have supported you for the last four or five or six years. Congratulations to you as well. You should all be proud of this day. It's a momentous day in your lives and the start of a great future for all of you. I just want you to remember one thing, that you are well prepared now to go out and compete and win in whatever endeavor you want to do. In corporate America, if you want to go into graduate schools, et cetera, you're well prepared. Your academic deans, your faculty have worked hard to make sure that you studied the right material and that you digested the right material and that now you can actually uh, take the time to uh, uh, take advantage of all that knowledge you have to be successful. And that's the most important thing you have. I want to let you know that, uh, uh, that you are as prepared as any academic uh, student that's finishing this year to go out and compete in whatever you want to do. Be proud. Be proud of Tuskegee. Be proud of your degree. And when you get your first promotion, make sure that you think mom first, dad second, and then call your graduate, graduate administrators. <laughs> now, what I want to tell you is we had a good talk yesterday, so I'm not going to go over those grounds except to remind you of a couple of things. We expect you now, as an alumni of Tuskegee, to be responsible. We expect you now to be able to call Tuskegee University Mother Tuskegee. Remember what I told you yesterday. When you call it Mother Tuskegee, there's a responsibility. And that responsibility is to give back, to nurture, to make sure Mother Tuskegee survives and thrives going forward. So I expect you to do that, and I'm here to help you do that, and my organization is. We would like to make sure that you understand that uh, you have a network out there to help you. Uh, again, I'll tell you that in your cell phone from Dean Gray, you have 
uh, contact information on all of our local alumni clubs and our executive team. Use that information. When you go out to your new jobs or you go out to graduate school, wherever you are, look to see if there's a local club of the Tuskegee National Alumni Association available to you. That's your new family. And your new family is there to help you when you're going to need a barber shop. Where's the best dentist? Where's the doctor? Where's the church home? We are there in those communities, and we can help you get to the right place to get you started. So lean on your Tuskegee National Alumni Association family. We are there to help you to make sure that you're successful both at your jobs and in the community. So be sure to remember that. For those of you who did not get the alumni, young alumni pen yesterday, when you give us the information, just indicate to Jamon Pulliam that you did not get a pen. He will put one in the mail for you. We want you to stay connected. We want you to start your process of becoming a great alumni uh, individual for Tuskegee University. That is uh, the, the crux of what I wanted to remind you of today. But remember three things. The Tuskegee National Alumni Association, all of our alumni, try to do three things really well. We raise money for Tuskegee University, which you now have a responsibility to do. We recruit the best and brightest students for Tuskegee University, which you now empowered to do. And we raise scholarship money to support the students here, like you were supported as you came through this place for four years. So I ask you to take that very seriously, and that's your responsibility now as alumni. Now what I'd like for you to do is stand, and repeat, raise your right hand and repeat after me. Please stand. I would also take this opportunity to invite any alumni of Tuskegee that's here today with us to also stand and reaffirm your commitment to Tuskegee University. So alumni, you can please stand as well. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. All alumni stand as well, please. We, the graduates of Tuskegee University, are conscious of our obligations to be both faithful followers and dependable leaders. Joining the thousands of Tuskegee alumni, we commit ourselves to be worthy sons and daughters of our alma mater, to realize in, our, in ourselves high standards of integrity and competence, to fulfill in ourselves her tradition of unselfish service to mankind, to give liberally of our time, talents, and financial support. To assure her continued viability and in the near and distant future we will meet life's challenges with courage and dignity. Again, congratulations. T.U. You know. T.U. You Let us now stand for the singing of the Tuskegee song. Following the benediction, I ask that you please remain in place until the recessional is completed. After the benediction, please follow the lead marshal to the receiving line at the front of the chapel.
And now, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Liberate the oppressed. Honor all humanity for the sake of which we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen.